So this is going to be the last video in terms of how to make the unit circle um, because this will fill in the last piece of information that we really care about on the unit circle which are the coordinate points. So before we continue here um, it's going to be really really important if you watch the degrees video uh, I briefly showed you these special right triangles here and I told you don't worry about the numbers just worry about the degrees. Well now let's go ahead and worry about the whole thing. Um, if I were you, what I would personally do is quickly jot these down. Um, once I get rid of them, then I end up having to stay on the next page. So real quickly, if you need to pause the video and jot these unit circle or jot these special right triangles down, make sure that you've got the hypotenuse of one, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. The side that's opposite the 30 degrees is one half. Opposite the 60 degrees is root three over two. Hypotenuse here is one on a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Root two over two are those side lengths. So again, I would pause the video now, make sure that you jot these down. So you should have quickly jotted those down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them now. Uh, this is going to be that unit, same unit circle that we've been looking at. The only difference is I went ahead and put in all of the degrees on here, just so that we can quickly reference things and we don't have to remember exactly what was what. Um, but as we've gone through these videos, I've kept mentioning to you guys that we're on a coordinate plane where your y-axis is here and your x-axis is this red line here. And I kept saying that. And we're actually going to use that information to create these coordinate points. Because really what's going on is the origin of our coordinate plane is set at the center of our circle. And we've decided that the radius of this circle, the radius of this unit circle, is equal to one unit. So that means from the center to any point along, along the edge of the circle is going to be one unit, which actually makes finding those quadrantial points very, very simple. Because if we remember, our coordinate points have how far we travel in the x direction, how far we travel in the y direction. So to go from the center to this point right here, we travel one unit to the right, because that's our radius and we travel zero units up or down. Well, by that same logic, up here at 90 degrees, we travel zero units left and right, but we travel one unit up. Over here at 180, we travel one unit to the left, so make sure you've got that negative, and zero units up or down. Last but not least for these quadrantial angles, you travel zero units left or right, and one unit down, so again we've got that negative sign. So these quadrantial angles are pretty intuitive to figure out. You travel one unit up, down, left, or right. But all these other angles, we end up traveling at some weird way. We can't just say that the x value is 1 or the y value is 1 because we don't quite go that far. So in the degrees video, I mentioned that I'm going to show you guys that this unit circle is filled with special right triangles. And here's how we can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this on here, a nice bold line so it's easy to see. If we put our pencils on this 30 degree line point and we go straight down, so we drop a perpendicular, then some of you might be able to see we've got a right triangle. that right there, because we went from our initial side to this side right here, it's guaranteed that that angle is 30 degrees. And because we dropped a perpendicular, that means that this angle here is 90. And because every triangle should have 180 degrees, this angle right here has to be 60 degrees. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Not only that, but our hypotenuse goes from the origin to a point on the circle. So that means we have to have a hypotenuse length of 1, because that's the radius of our circle. If you look back at the triangles that you created previously, this is that first triangle that I showed you. You've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle with a hypotenuse of 1 which means the side length that's opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be 1 half. 
the side length that's opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be root 3 over 2. And this information is so important because this information is what allows us to get the coordinate points for 30 degree angle. Remember, your x and your y are the distance, positive or negative, so not quite the distance. It's the way you travel to go from the center, or the origin, to your point. So the x value is going to be from the center over as far right as we need to go. So the distance from here to here is root 3 over 2, which means our x value is root 3 over 2. And then to go from that x-axis up to our point, we travel 1 half. That's the length of this line. So knowing that special right triangle gave us the points. Those are the coordinate points for that 30 degree angle. So again, because I want to keep this picture nice and clean, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. But what I would suggest doing is finding a fill-in-the-blank unit circle and drawing out all those circles. If you like the different colors, sorry, drawing out all those triangles. If you like the different colors, get yourself a colored pencil. It works really well when you're first learning the unit circle. So I'm going to go ahead and backtrack a lot until I get my nice pretty image back. Should be coming up soon. There we go. So what we discovered there was that this coordinate point is going to be root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So let's move over to the 45 degree angle. Again, if we put our pens on that point and we go straight down, drop a perpendicular, we create a right triangle. And not just any right triangle, but because we went from the initial side to this 45 degree angle as our terminal side, we have a 45. This one's 90 because we dropped the perpendicular. So this side has to be 45 degree angle. And again, because we went from the very origin or the center of our circle to any point on the outside, we're guaranteed that it has a hypotenuse of 1. Here's that second triangle that we were looking at previously. We've got a hypotenuse of 1, so the two sides that are opposite those 45 degree angles are going to be root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So how far are we going to travel to go from the origin to the right hand side? Well, we travel physically root 2 over 2 units. What about to go from the x-axis up to our point? We travel another root 2 over 2 units. So by knowing those relationships with those special right triangles, we can figure out the coordinate points. I'm going to go ahead and erase. We're going to do maybe two more, and then we'll show you a little trick with filling out the rest of it. So let's back up a little bit until we get the nice clean image again. Oop, too far. So the last one in this quadrant is going to be that 60 degree angle. So again, I'm going to put my pen on it, drop all the way down. Let me get a nice thick line. There we go. Drop it all the way down. And we create that right triangle. To go from the initial side to the terminal side here is going to be 60 degrees. Here we've got 90 degrees, so to make it 180, this guy has to be 30 degrees. Again, to go from the origin to any point is the radius, which is 1. Now, I only showed you two special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45. And if you're paying attention, you're looking closely, you'll see this is another 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's just rotated. So what I would do is, again, if you drew out those triangles, go ahead and rotate your paper until you get a triangle. You might have to flip it over, but rotate until you get a triangle that looks like this. But the gist of it is the side that's opposite your 30 degree angle is 1 half, because it's the same relationship. The side that's opposite your 60 degree angle is root 3 over 2. So again, we have that 30, 60, 90 triangle where to go from the origin to as far over here is going to be a distance of one half. 
and to go from that x-axis up to the point is going to be another root 3 over 2. So we filled out that whole first quadrant by using just special right triangles and the fact that the radius of the circle is 1. Let's go ahead and back up, make it nice and clean. I said I'd do one more because I want to show you something a little bit interesting that happens here. So let's fill these out. This one we discovered, forgot to write it down, is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And this one over here is root 3 over 2. Oops, sorry, nope, I lied to you. It's 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Because of our 30, 60, 90 triangle, that x was going to be opposite the 30 degree angle. So let's take a look at the next one here. Last one, and then I'll show you that cool little trick. So this time, as you go straight down to it, you'll end up with a 30, 60 triangle, sorry, 30, 60, 90 triangle that is flipped over. Well, how do I know it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Because I know the distance from 120 degrees to 180, which is this angle right here, is 60 degrees. To go from 120 to 180, I have to travel 60 degrees. If that's 60, this has to be 30, because we've got a 90 degree angle there. Well, that's the exact same triangle as this guy just flipped over. So we know that these values have to be 1 half and root 3 over 2. The only difference is now we're traveling to the left 1 half. So we've got to have a negative coordinate, ax or coordinate point there. So all of these triangles, if you look over, they're going to be reflections of each other. Let me go ahead and undo and get that nice clear picture again, and I'll show you how to quickly fill that in. So this is going to be the reflection of our green. This is why I like those colors here keep that same coordinate point, just change it to a negative. This over here, we're going to have that same coordinate point, but now our x value is going to be negative. Again, we're looking at those colors, blue to blue. Yellow to yellow is another reflection, so we'll have a negative x, positive y. And the same thing's going to happen to these bottom. If we were to draw out the triangle for this guy, we would end up with another 30, 60, 90 triangle. But this time, we're traveling to the left and we're traveling down. So we end up with coordinate points that are reflected, the same exact one as these yellows, negative x value, negative y value reflection of the blue, negative x value, negative y value. And last one in this quadrant, same thing, negative x value, negative y value. Last but not least, this fourth quadrant here, we know that we're going to have positive x values and negative y values. So again, reflecting across those points, because it's the same triangle over and over and over. Blue is the reflection now. We've got a positive x and a negative y. And last but not least, positive x, negative y. In the next videos, I'll be looking at some reference angles and some coterminal angles. And as you do those reference angles, think about those ideas of the reflection. I'll probably end up mentioning that explicitly, but if you've already learned reference angles, or if you already understand reference angles, take a look at those reference angles for all these yellow lines, then the blue lines, the green lines. Something special happens there, which makes things really nice for us. So again, we drew out those right triangles using those special right triangles, these guys right here made them show up on all these triangles right here, and we used those relationships to give us those coordinate points.